Hey guys, good morning, good morning, welcome, welcome, welcome to another live session of Stock Sniper Trading. My name is Dave, guys, my partner is Ron. Let's get down to business here, guys. Jumping in on US 30, sell, okay? I'm jumping in. That, guys, that's a 100 pip drop. Guys, yes, we caught it. Hey, guys, 200 pips, please, secure. <laughs> Trading with a perfect broker is the key, which takes you one step ahead. At AFX, we have you covered. The future of Forex is Zero Commission Here at AFX, we offer ultra low commission, which starts at 99 cents per lot. Our accounts spreads start from 0.0 pips. With account leverage up to 500x, and can have a minimum deposit of $100, with an additional 100% deposit bonus, regulated by HEMC Greece, compliant with ESMA, EU, regulated with FSEA, South Africa. Nothing to lose, but something to gain. Trade with the world's most liquid market provider, AFX, recommended by Stock Sniper Trading. To get started use the affiliate link below. As a trader, we all look for tight or low spreads, which helps us to get in and out of the market. Using the right broker can help us try different strategies. With multiple options of brokers on the web, here at Stock Sniper Trading, we have a recommended broker, that is, Hanko Trade. With spreads as low as 0 pips and leverage up to 500x, Hanko Trade is just one click away. With multiple account types to choose from, you also have a minimum deposit of $10. Using Hanko Trade's affiliate program, refer a friend and earn up to a 40% commission on trading volume. Built by traders, for traders. Hanko Trade. Okay guys, welcome Stock Sniper Trading, the night's webinar, Forex Basics. We're going to be talking about spreads, spreads, lots, pips, uh, order types. We're going to talk about um, stop loss placement and all of that. So this was gold this morning. You guys are probably familiar with it. You guys probably were live with Dave and uh, gold. May, it had the unemployment. That's why guys, we always, Forex Factory guys, this is uh, a big, you guys always got to check Forex Factory. Uh, I, I Last night, like I told you guys, 815 red folder uh, unemployment news is big. Tomorrow's going to be another big day uh, after digesting the info. 10 o'clock was another one, ISM. So what happened today on gold? Uh, they were previous was 680,000. They were forecasting 695,000. Look at how many people didn't go back to work. 330,000 red from their projections. So what happened at that time? The U.S. dollar, um, they were buying, they were dumping the U.S. dollar, and then gold went up. It's a safe haven for money. So that just was correlated with the unemployment numbers. Then at 10 a.m., they um, they had ISM services, which were positive. Okay, so and if you read what these are, click the folder right here, and you can see what these are. Okay, so it's released monthly above 50. So it gives you all the information here, guys. If you want to read all about that. So when this was positive information for the U.S., then they flipped it. Then they started buying buying back the US dollar and then gold started dumping. So it's everything is all correlated with economic data and news. So that's why this website guys, you have to have it on your on your on your phone or your desktop every day you're trading because this is where the volatility is these red folders and you guys see like this morning what happened okay it was nuts um with whatever you're trading us 30 the dirty 30 nas nas and uh this okay so now let's get started guys so on the right side of our trading view chart, we have the price. Okay, so um, right here it's 1814.94. So, what are these? So, these have to be um, put in value so that we can, we can buy and sell, and they come in increments on the decimal place. So, that's what's called a PIP, a percentage in price. So, I'm going to go over um, how, how to calculate those. Um, uh, right now we're going to go into that and then also up here you have like the spread so the price of gold is 1812 that's the bid and the asking price is 1812.16 and the difference is nine so almost one pip spread right there okay so um 
Now what we're going to do, guys, is we're going to go to our uh, tutorial section right here. And you guys have this, but I'm going to review this with you guys more in depth. So make, so I and make sure you guys get this. So we're going to start off with this one. This is a what are pips, lots, leverage, and uh, spreads, okay? So we're going to come in here. And this is like the basics, guys. So what are these and how do they apply to Forex, okay? So how this is a this is a price, 1.24683. This could be GBP USD, okay? So that's the price we always see. Um, and what we're concentrating on, the, some charts have the fifth decimal place and some charts don't. They'll probably have only four after the decimal. But what this one rec, rep, is called is called the pipette, okay? It's the fifth decimal place. And then this one right here, the fourth one, it, that's called our pip, okay? And then when they start moving, when this three goes four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and then it goes to 10, this eight is gonna turn into a nine. So then that would be like a, ten, a, a pip move. And then when we move in this one, when this one goes from 68 to 78, that's a 10 pip move. And then the next one, this four would be, if this goes to 1.25, that's a hundred pip move. And then this one is 1000. We don't ever get those where we get a thousand pip move, but that's, if this one was to go to 1.3, right here um you get a thousand pips but what we're concentrating on are is in here this one so because we're looking for 10 20 30 40 50 pip moves in here um so going back to trading view if i go to let's say um right here uh gbp usd okay so see the price on the right uh right here uh let me just move this for you see Okay, so if I put right here at one 139.50, okay? So if we get a bullish move going up, um, it comes up and we get a move up to here, okay? And then back down. That move up there, so how to calculate it is very simple, guys. You can, there's tools you can use on TradingView, but if you wanna see like everything visual and everything, then you can do it uh, visually. So up here, it moved to 139.57. Remember the fifth decimal place? That's a, just a pipette. What I'm, what I'm concentrating on is the seven. So we moved from 139.50 to 139.57. So we, that's a seven pip move. So like if you were to do a standard lot, what I'm going to teach you guys next, that would be 70 US dollars you would make on that play. Just that little play up there, seven pips on a standard lot, 1.0, that you would make 70 US dollars, okay? So all it was was a move. Yeah. Uh, so it was a move from 139.50 to 139.57. And then when this pipette continues to move five six seven eight nine then the seven will turn into an eight and then it will be an eight pit move and so on and so forth okay and also going down so if we were to drop from 139.50 to 139.45 that's a five pip drop we're going from 139.50 to 139.45 five pips down okay and then if you guys want what you guys can use too is this tool right here if you want to do real quick there's this tool, the measuring tape. If I want to measure these bearish candles, this one, all the way down to here, it says right there, seven, almost 18 pips, 17.7, okay? So you can do that as well. So that's a, almost an 18 pip move. And if you were to do a standard lot, that would be 180 US dollars profit, okay? So back to the tutorials, guys. So just like we have here in the examples, 1.24683 and then it moves to 1.24693 do you see it, the nine and the eight so that's a one pip move and then we got 1.24683 and it goes to 78 so all we're doing is adding 68 and 78 that's 10 pips and then 100 pips uh, this is a nice one if we can catch this it will be 1.24683 and then you see it moves 1.25 because now we're getting the fourth decimal place over here so that's a 100 pip move and the thousand pip move is very very rare um, but it would go from 1.24683 to 1. Um, 25 continuing um, and then here this is a uh, backwards 10 pips 1.24683 you see we're going to 58 so if we're in a cell it dropped 10 pips down and then these are the spreads okay so this is how brokers make money not only do they make money with commissions but they also make money um by the spread okay so if there's a, a bid and an ask it's the difference 
and that and they're the ones that have the difference so that's why we shop around for different brokers that have the best spreads and also the spreads change during volatility too so you'll see if you're trading a slower session uh like uh, the asian tokyo session or the sydney session you'll see that the spreads are different because there's not a lot of volume in the market then when london or new york session opens up you'll see that the spreads start moving faster because there's more there's more liquidity in the market uh there's more buying and selling so brokers have to offer some some good spreads for people to buy okay um and if the move is like from 1.2612 to 1.2614 that's a two pip move so it's a two pip spread so when you're taking that trade you're essentially paying like two pips you're two pips behind so when you're using mt4 you guys probably see when you take a trade you go red uh, right, right away so you have to pay the commission and the spread that's why some guys were asking why am i why am i not at a loss if, when i just take a trade because that's the spread plus the commission you're behind in the trade that's how the broker they they make their money okay um but with fusion fusion markets that we use some of the spreads are amazing like euro usd and gbp usd sometimes there's no spread on them if you trade currency pairs gold is around less than one pip for me it's always like at 0.8 um bitcoin is 2.3 pips so you got a lot of good spreads with that broker um so that's what pips are okay um and it's a percentage in price it's the way how we make money in the forex market because there's the decimal places there's five decimal places so um that's what we're looking for just a move from 68 to 78 that's 10 pip move and then the way how you make money is you have to have a, a lot size and with the, the the amount of your lot size will determine how much profits you make because you're multiplying the, the the pips with the lot size okay so real quick what is a pip forex currency pairs are quoted in terms of pips which are percentage in points a pip is one one hundredth of one percent or the fourth decimal place so you got point zero 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 one the fourth decimal place remember the fifth one is called the pipette and that one rolls so it will go one two three four five six seven eight nine and when that one goes to ten then that will be one pip and then one two three four five six seven eight nine it moves up it will be now two pips so some brokers they don't even show the pipette um they just show four but um if you're on mt4 if you go under like simple you're only going to see like four you won't see a spread so always have your mt4 on advanced there's two you can pick simple and advanced always have your mt4 on advanced because then it gives you more information it will tell you the high and the low of that day it'll also tell you the spread and it will tell you um to the pipette do you have that rolling too so our goal as forex traders is to accumulate pips and convert them into profits by using lot sizes to purchase them so what is a lot forex is commonly traded in specific amounts called lots or basically the number of currency units you will buy or sell a lot can be represented as a micro mini or standard lot okay so this is what we got to understand here um if you're just starting out trading okay you do not want to start off with standard lots because you'll probably over leverage and when you don't know what you're doing and you're going to lose money so Number one, if you're new to trading, there's a demo account on MT4. You can always use a demo account. It's paper money. Um, you can uh, try different techniques, learn, and you don't lose money. It's kind of like when you play poker online. You can play with play money or before you get into real money and things like that. So there is a demo account. Then once you get comfortable at a demo account, you want to take your skills to the real, uh, the real markets and you want to put in real money of your own money, then... You, this is called a micro lot. It's a 0 0.01. You're not getting rich with this, this lot size. Okay. So basically what it is, is um, for every pip, you're going to make 10 cents. Okay. So it's a micro. If it goes up 10 pips, you're going to profit one US dollar, but this is basically to learn how to trade. Okay. So you want to learn how to hit buy sells, understand what's going on. So that's a safe um, and you're in you're in a real market environment where you don't have to risk a lot of money like you can sign up an account with $25 and just play with this and see what you can do with it okay but then when you get more comfortable with that and then you want to take it to the next level then we have mini lots which is a 0.1 so this is a dollar a pip so if we make a 10 pip move and we're using a 0 0.1 a mini lot you're making 10 US dollars okay so this is where traders when they start to get a little bit comfortable in the markets and then they want to take it uh, a little further without 
over leveraging into the standard lots. So this is a safe one. So if you make 10 pips, you make 10 bucks. Okay, so this is a good account size if you're starting out with like um, $500 or less or something like that, $500,000 and you wanna learn. And then that's why I say, guys, don't look at the money. You're not gonna get rich with $10, okay? But the pips, the pips are where, what, what it's at because you can always add more money into your account. You can always fund more money do once you get comfortable you can deposit a couple thousand dollars but if you're not making pips with a micro or a mini lot you're not going to make no pips with a standard lot because you're not really understanding how to trade so at the beginning stages guys just be humble use these tiny lot sizes just to feel the market the real market you get emotions involved when you get in a trade you're gonna so when you take a trade with a mini you might be down two dollars in the red you probably have never really seen your mt4 in the red and that's real money so you kind of get the feel of the markets are you going to panic you know what i mean this is where you got to control your emotions and then that that's what's going to make you a better trader once you learn how to control emotions in the market and and how much risk you're willing to take i know how much risk i'm willing to take every every trade i take i know how much my max loss can be so if it doesn't hit my max loss i'm not stressed out like when i'm using five lots on gold just uh, or 10 lots i was just explaining before the call when i use a 10 lot on gold i have to pay 45 dollars commission fee it's 450 per standard lot so 45 dollars. i'm already down to the um and then with the spread you with a 10 lot you could be down 200 dollars behind like on one or two pips and then uh, with the spread so uh, when i take a trade with a 10 lot i'm already minus 250 dollars Okay, so, but I understand what I'm using a larger account, I understand my risk, and I've been trading the markets for a while. So that's just something that you guys are going to have to get comfortable with. And then once you get comfortable with your lot size and risk management, then you, your trading game will you'll take it to the next level, because then you will you you'll be fearless when you go in the markets, you will be like you're, you'll be confident, you know what I mean, you won't be scared, you when you hit the buy and sell you'll feel confident hitting it. Uh, you have your stop loss place and then you just sit back and relax and let the price action do its thing, but you're going to follow every single candlestick how I do when we're trading, you can see that I'm going play by play candle by candle, as long as it's going to my direction it's making higher highs higher lows if I'm in a buy everything looks good uh, strength is moving up then I I feel good about that trade um Hi. so yeah yeah go ahead can you go over what those are worth on gold and us 30 see that that's that's a thing a good question frankie good question that you brought that up see with my broker fusion if i'm using a 10 lot okay and that's big on on gold so for 10 pip move it's a thousand dollars us right but sometimes my when i'm trading live and then i flip to us 30 I'm doing the market execution. My 10 lot is still in there from the gold. And then I just click like I buy because I see US 30 is moving. But my broker has it different with indices. So when it goes to a 10 lot on an indice, it's it's only $10 a pip. So if, if US 30 moves 10 pips, no, it should, I should make $1,000, but then it only gives me $100. So what I have to do is I got to change my lot size to 100 lot on US 30 to be uh, equivalent to a 10 lot on gold. So some brokers have it all different. So that's something that you have to feel out with your broker, okay? Um, that's nothing that is anything to do with you, but that's just the broker, how they have it set up. And that, kept, that kept, kept happening to me too. I was yeah, like, yeah. So I got in a trade the other day too. I was live. And then yeah. I looked at it. I'm like, I hit it, the US 30 for like 30 pips. Should have been a, I hit it with a 10 lot. I thought it was going to be like a $3,000 move. I looked at it and it was only $300. And I was like, fuck, I hit the, uh, the wrong one. Like it just inputted it. So I have to manually change all of that when I'm trading, when I'm flip flopping from gold to US 30 or NASDAQ. Um, other brokers, they have it standard. If you're hitting a 10 lot, it'll be a 10 lot on your indice. But but fusion brokers, unfortunately, they don't have that. So, um, but good question that you brought that up. So they're not always correlated. So commodities, commodities, and remember, first of all, currency pairs um, like GBP, USD, Euro, USD, GJ, and things like that. They have the, the 10 lot is, uh, those all follow lot sizes. So if you make 10 pips on a currency pair, uh, 10 pips at a standard lot, you're going to make $100. So that's standard on all currency pairs. Um, and it goes with gold too. But when you're flipping to an indice, those indices, the brokers might have different. So that's just something that you got to practice. You got to you got to test it out. And um, uh, then once you know that, you'll know what you're trading with that. Um, but hopefully that answered the question. That all has to do with the broker. Um, and then we have, yeah, go ahead. Sorry, just one more thing. So like on gold, like, 
it, for for a mini for a mini lot like if you're up two pips like the profit is like four bucks so is it like is it double like can you just like clarify like on a mini yeah a mini will be uh like we, on a on an on an indice or gold well, what gold. are you talking about? On, on gold on gold so a mini will be you're you're getting a dollar a pip a dollar a pip dollar a pip yeah so if you make okay. a two pip move you're going to be two pips but remember you have a your spread so you're right. going to be probably break even okay Okay, so then, right. yeah, so you're behind on the trade by two, two pips, one pip, whatever your spread is. So okay. you need to make um, three pips to be in profit there. Gotcha. Okay, there's always a spread, guys. So this is when we get into buy orders, buy stops and things like that. I'm going to I'll explain everything to you guys, um, because also when I'm trading, I'm I'm live. I'm watching the spreads. So uh, when I get into the buy stops and the sell stops, um, when they trigger, you're getting whatever the spread is at the market. So like when I'm trading, I, I, I rarely use buy stops and sell stops. I know a lot of guys like them, but um, me personally, I like to watch the spreads because I want to get in. When I see a spread go down to zero or one or something like that, and I love the move, I'm getting in on that because I'm getting basically like a free trade. It's just with the commission. And if it's going in my direction, uh, I'm already ahead of the trade. Why would I want to wait when the broker moves at one or two pips? when I could get in early. So I'm always got my, like I trade off my phone. I'm old school. I don't use desktop. When I trade, I trade off my phone. I got it like right beside me. I got it right beside me now. And I'm watching everything as it goes along. I see the spreads, even when we're trading live, Dave uses his empty, his phone too. Um, there's guys that use the, the desktop. I don't know. I just, I don't, I don't, I don't like desktop. I, I like charting. I like staring at the candles and then I like um, right off my phone. That's just me personally. Everyone's different, but um because I'm always trading on my phone, wherever I am. If I'm going to the grocery store, I'm in the line. Like, <laughs> I'm just trading. I'm trading everywhere. Wherever I go, I'm trading. Um, it's it's addicting. <laughs> and, um, okay, so we did the minis, guys. So this is good for, this is 0 0.01 micro is first day. If you're getting into Forex trading, you want to get your feet wet, go micro. Demo, micro. Then when you want to advance, you've been in the uh, trading for a couple months now, and you want to test it out, maybe deposit a couple hundred dollars in account, you go minis, okay? A dollar a pip. Again, you're not going to get rich, but what you're doing is you're looking to make, like have a goal, guys. This is how I started. I had a goal. I wanted to make 10 pips per day for one month. And if I could do that, then I, then I said, okay, maybe Forex is for me, okay? If you can make 10 pips per day consistently, then you can, then you're, you're, you're good at what you can do. Then when you get comfortable like that, step it up a little bit. Now make 20 pips per day. Okay. Again, it's only $20 a day, but if you're doing that five days a week consistently, now that's going to add up. That's going to be $100 for the week. So if you're using $500 and you make a hundred dollars a week, you've just made 20% of your account. That's big guys. If you go to a bank and you get a 20% return in one month, that's good. Think about it. If I put all my money in a mutual fund, annually, all they're going to give me is 8%. If I'm making 20% month over month, your account is compounding faster than any mutual fund there is on, on anywhere any bank can offer you. Okay. So just think about it as percentages, guys, and pips. Don't look at it as dollar amounts. Okay. I hate when people do that. They want to, they want to, I say, I, I don't, I don't do that style. I'm all about percentages. When I'm trading stocks, I'm looking to make 10, 20% per trade and I'm in and out. You know, I'm not looking to, because the amount of shares you buy that will dictate how much money you make. So, but if you're getting those percentages and you can do it with a small account, you can do it with a big account. Nothing changes. It's just your profits. Okay. So just get in the mentality of thinking about pimp pips and not, not pimps <laughs> pips. And um, you guys are going to make some good money. Like me, when I'm trading, I'm looking, when I'm scalping, I'm looking for 10, 10, 20 pips. Okay. Cause I go larger lot sizes, right? When I go a smaller lot size for me, I can hold it longer. But when I'm in like a, a five, 10 lot, I'm looking for like 10 pips. And then what I do is I'll scale out. So then I'll take, like I always say, I preach by that. I'll take out 80% and I'll leave a runner break even. And if it continues going in my direction, then yeah, you're going to continue to bank off of it. But that's another good strategy guys to really build your account and um, take a little bit. Always you got to, if you're getting profits right off right away, when you're scalping 10, 20 pips, take a little bit off the table, guys, take a little bit because you see when we're going live, it can reverse real fast and come back right where you bought in. And you probably executed a beautiful trade 
it went in your direction, but it just, it, it got, maybe it was making a lower high and you got caught by an upper wick and then sellers just pushed it down. But it happens guys. But when you start to learn how to take out some pips out of the market, um, then it's good. Okay. So just Ronnie. get in that mentality. Ronnie. Yep. Um, I don't want to uh, get off topic or whatever, um, but um, if you, like you always say scale out, right? Yep. So I use MT4 on my computer. Like I can't do that. So the only thing I can do is do two orders at once and then leave a runner, right? Yeah. So like I don't trade desktop. So personally, I can't even talk about that. I don't. Yeah. I don't trade with desktop. So yeah. I'm yeah. with phone. I can change my orders on the fly. Yeah. Um, so like desktop. If there's anybody else on the call that uses desktop, maybe they can answer that. I personally, I don't use it, so I can't answer that, bro. Um, okay. I don't use it. Uh, I always trade on my phone. Okay. Okay. Um, and then we have guys. Okay. So this is standard lot now. So this is when you're good at trading, you feel comfortable. You're, you're, you understand what's going on. You're making consistent gains with smaller lot, um, sizes and then your account is growing. And then this is where you feel confident to actually deposit some good money into your account so that you can make good money. Cause guys, I'm not going to lie to you. You need money to make money. Okay. If you want to make good money, you have to have some money. So everyone says, how much do I need? Do I need a hundred thousand dollars? No, you don't need a hundred thousand dollars. Do you need $25,000? No, you don't need $25,000. You can start off with $1,000, $2,000. And again, just look for 10 pips a day. Okay. And if you're doing it with a standard lot, you're making $100 per day. Okay. Five days. Now you're making $500 a week, multiply by four, you're making 2000 US dollars a month and you can compound your account. $2,000 a month is pretty good money. Like some people have to work an entire month to make that money. If you can make it by trading one hour a day and you're doing that consistently, that's pretty good. Now your account will go from um, like 2000, it will go to 3000 and keep compounding. Then when your account starts growing, now you can, when you're double your account, you can start to increase your lot size, maybe move from a one to maybe a 1.5. Now you're making like $150 per 10 pit move. You go, go to double lot, make $200 and things like that. So it all is, it all, it, it all goes in levels. Okay. It all goes in stages, but if you're not making pips with a micro or a mini, you're not going to make money with a standard. Okay. So people think the, the bigger, the lot size I go, the more money I'm going to make. No. Cause what happens if it goes backwards, you're going to be down a lot of money. So um, don't always think guys, lot sizes, you make money like Dave, Dave doesn't trade with heavy lot sizes. He trades with what he's comfortable with, where he's not sweating, getting into a trade. He's comfortable with it and he's making good money. You know what I mean? um so and he tells you guys that he tells you guys live like he's not out there showing off what he's like i'm a big baller i'm trading with 25 lot. he doesn't do that i don't do that either when i go live i scale it down i scale with i trade with one or two lots um when i'm going live um because something can happen i gotta go to my thing and then i, I gotta focus on on the live trading and things like that but when i'm trading personal then i i can i can trade with a little bit more higher lot sizes um and things like that but um, you can make a lot of money because the thing too that I'm noticing when I go a higher lot size, I don't hold as long. Okay. Cause you get in and you make a nice impulse move. You get, you go up real good money and then I take out. And then if I was in it for a couple more minutes, if I left it, then I could have caught a break and it would have went down longer, but it's hard to do because the swings are big when you use a higher lot size, like you got to have the stomach for that. And um, so if you use a smaller lot size that you're comfortable with, you can allow price action with a proper stop loss to just do what it's got to do. Like if you, I'll show you on the gold example today, when it was consolidating before that big dump, it was going up and down, but it was, it was consolidating nice before that nice dump. Um, so, and then what is leverage? Okay. So everyone asks, what is leverage? Okay. The Forex market and most brokers allow you to trade on leverage. Leverage means that money is usually borrowed, borrowed from the broker. Forex trading does offer high leverage where a trader can start with a small initial deposit and control and build their account with leverage from the broker. An example is leverage is 50 to one, 100 to one, and it goes as high as 500 to one with some brokers. So what they do is you're basically borrowing money from them, like on margin, and they're allowing you. So with a smaller account so that you can take more trades, but you're 
take your they're allowing you to borrow the money so that's what leverage is but it's not always positive because the more leverage you have the more loss you can take but you can never lose more so if i deposit a hundred dollars and it goes down i don't have stop loss i'm not going to lose more than a hundred dollars even if the trade continues to go bearish you'll get a margin call guys so what a margin call is when your account reaches about 20 percent like you've lost 80 percent you don't have a stop loss you'll get a margin call from your broker and they're gonna they'll give you either an email or like a call and say hey uh we're taking you out of this trade uh automatically because you don't have any more uh leverage and they'll take you out and you'll lose 80 percent of your money okay if you don't have a stop loss and it's just running okay so but to answer that question i've had questions do if you do go into negative and you owe the broker money at the end of the day no it, everything will get zeroed out properly but they will give you a heads up when you get a margin call you never want to get a margin call guys so um always use a stop loss um so that you don't get a margin call okay because a margin if you don't have a stop loss you can wipe out your entire account guys and you don't want that remember rule number one trading is protect your capital rule number two is protect your profits okay um that way if you protect your capital it allows you to make more profits daily but if you're not protecting it then it's going to be a disaster guys okay so that's rule number one and then, so that was leverage and fusion they offer you can choose i can choose what leverage i want with them i can go 100 to 1 all the way up to 500 to 1. it's all depends on it's your choice with some brokers have it um smaller brokers might have lower leverage like 50 to 1 100 to 1 and then more a brokers they have higher leverage because they have the liquidity to provide that okay so um that's what leverage is it allows you to trade with more money than you actually have so that you can take trades and things like that okay and you can also add like multiples. So if you get into a buy, you like it, and you get into one order, you could possibly add the same buy, hit buy two times and get in and make. So that's another strategy we're gonna teach you guys. So if you master how to make 10 pips on a move, what you can do is you can bank on that same move. You can add two orders, okay? So you're making uh, actually 20 pips. That's another way how to really scale your account, guys. If you get really good at pinpointing one trade a day and it's good for 10 pips, add two buy orders and you're essentially making 20 pips so you can double your pip value just by using that strategy and you got to be and be selective because you see how the markets move if you're just looking for 10 pips a day with multiple orders then you can get in get out and you could be done for the day you know um you don't have to sit and trade all day okay sorry to interrupt sorry to interrupt inter yeah albert what's uh, up a quick question for you yeah. on on uh that what you just said about the two lots or yeah. whatever it was yeah um what if i wanted to just not instead of one lot i do a two lot order can yeah, i do that could, yeah you could do that if, if you're okay with that um like that the swings and you you obviously have the money in your account so you're okay with that so that's if you're okay with that it's just when you get into like a multiples then what you could do is you can scale out a one you can leave one running if with the two lot then you got to go back to market execution if you want to keep a runner you got to manually put it in um if you have like two orders running you could just side swipe and just get out real quick real quick so okay. that's that's the only difference with that but essentially it's the sure. same thing yeah thank you sorry for interrupting no 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 interruptions guys if you got questions guys this is your webinar it's not for me okay i know what a pip is you guys if you guys got questions you guys ask don't feel uh, like guys we're all in this together okay well, you guys are going to get to know each other you guys are all family now okay um so if you guys got questions guys this is not like uh, like a lecture you know what i mean we're not in school this is just me you talking um that's why like we can be ourselves here so if you guys got real questions that's what i want if you guys got real questions ask them okay if if something you don't understand like what i went over here let me know guys because i'm, I'm going to move on so just make sure you guys understand this and then because it will make it better um for your trading and then we can start advance we can start moving with you guys and start teaching some uh some good strategies and things like that but you guys got to know for all the new guys you guys got to know um how to use mt4 the basics and things like that and understand like this is important stuff spreads because this is where the brokers will get you guys if you get into a trade and your spread is high you're gonna you're gonna be behind on the trade okay and for those guys that are trading bitcoin with a seven thousand nine thousand spread stay away from that guys you're not gonna make money scalping bitcoin because you're already down 10 pips in the trade that's what we're looking for when we're scalping a 
10 pip move is a solid trade. If you're, if you're behind 10 pips, you essentially got to make 20 pips to, to, to make some good money. So guys understand spreads. This is important. Leverage is very important too. And then lot sizes guys. So, um, but we're going to go over this all the time. Okay. This is just like a little brief introduction introduction. And then, so, okay, so we did, uh, and then the spreads, guys. The Forex spread represents two prices. The buying is the bid, the red number, price and given for the currency, pair, commodity, crypto, whatever we're, we're, we're trading. And then the selling is the asking price, okay? And then the difference between those two is the spread. And this is who makes this. The bid and ask is made by the broker, okay? They're the middleman, okay? They get the liquidity and then they're supplying us. And that's how they make their money, okay? So uh, if it wasn't for a broker, we wouldn't be able to trade Forex. So you guys got to understand that. Um, we're paying, they're providing a service to us so that we can trade. So they got to be compensated, right? Um, just like with anything you do in life, they're the middleman. They got to make some money. Um, and then the difference between the bid and the ask is the spread. Many Forex pairs have a spread when you take a trade and this is the cost of each transaction that the broker charges. These spreads fluctuate with volatility and different trading sessions. Okay, so this is important, guys. So the spreads change with different <laughs> sessions and volatility. So if you're watching your MT4, like you'll see on it, like tonight, Tokyo, you'll see the spreads are real tight because there's not a lot of volatility. And also when, when plays start opening up, like you'll see that the spreads are now changing because now there's a lot of buying, selling. So brokers are, 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 are trying to find liquidity and they're changing the spreads on the fly. So when there's volatility session opens, like what you'll see when London leading into London, you'll see the spreads start changing leading into New York spreads are changing. Like today going into that NFP news at 815, you should see the spreads. They were changing real quick. So you guys got to watch that because the better the spread for you, the more money you make. So you got to understand that. Okay. You don't want to take trades where you're not getting a good spread. Um, cause then the, the broker is making the money, especially too, if you have a commission fee on top. Okay. So that was pips, lots, leverage. Um, I'm going to go into this one order types. Okay. So, um, order types guys. Okay. So we have market orders, which is a buy and sell on your MT4. Okay. Um, and then we have pending orders. So these are the buy limits, buy stops, sell limits, and sell stops. If you guys have your MT4 open, open it up on your phones or your desktop guys. And, um, because I'm gonna I'm gonna show you guys here, okay? So on my MT4, I use MT4 four. Um, so you guys have five. I got four on mine, and you see, I can when I have when I'm under quotes. If you go under simple, you're gonna see how basic it is. It just says GBP USD and the price. So stay off of simple. Go to advanced, and you'll see that you have now GBP USD. It will tell you the spread. On mine, it says a three, so it's basically almost like zero, okay? And then I have the price bid and ask and then I have the low of the day and the high of the day okay um, so it's the advance is a really nice um, screen and you see the spreads moving uh, before we take trades and then we have these types of orders okay so I'm going to start off with a sell stops okay so what a sell stop is, it's an order placed below the price and it keeps going down. So what a sell stop is, if, if something is going to go down bearish, okay, you think it's going to start selling off, you could put a sell in an order at a certain level and then you can place your stop loss, you can manually put it in ahead of time. And this trade, when it goes to this price, it triggers then it will, it will trigger and it will put your stop loss and you're in the trade, okay? So this way, if you're doing this, you don't have control of the spread. As soon as the price gets up there, it locks you in, you're in the trade, it places your stop loss, okay? Um, and then the buy stop is just the opposite. It's the same thing where an order is placed above the price and it keeps going up. So if we see it's coming down to like a, a support level and it's we're looking for a bounce, some guys have a buy stop in where they want to buy like a support level and then they have their stop loss placed below and it's automatically put in so if you guys want to do that if you click on a, a pair okay and then you go to trade on your mt4 don't take a trade guys okay if, if it's live um but then you see at the top you can click on gbp usd and then it's got a drop down okay and um right below it it says like sell limit market execution if you do a market execution, guys, um, you're getting in the trade right away. You'll get in right away. Then you have to manually go in and place your stop loss if you want, okay? That's a market execution. But then these ones with these uh, stop entry orders, 
it will be done before you, you can put it in. So if I go to a buy limit, you're going to see that it brings up the price. So I got to put in the price I want to buy at. Let's say I want to buy at 1.5000. I will manually put that in and then stop loss you manually put in. So if I want to do 10 pips below, because I'm taking a buy, I'll set my stop loss at 1.5000. Uh, 49990, 10 pips behind 1.50. Okay. And then if I want to take profits, you can also manually put in take profits. Okay. Some traders do that. They, they like TP1 to be 10 pips. They'll manually put it in because if the wick comes up there and touches, the, the the broker will execute that trade and get them out. If we're if we're doing it manually and the wick goes up and you don't get in time and then it starts going down, you won't get your your order triggered. So some people like to have it in and then it automatically executes. Okay. Um, the only difference with that is you're getting whatever spread they offer you at that time. You have no control about that. So um, guys that are like me, if I'm using market executions, I'm always watching spreads and things like that. So I personally don't use too much of these um, stop entries. I'm more of a market execution guy because I'm always scalping in and out. I don't have time. If I go, if I start scalping one minute candles, I don't have time to sit there and start placing um, stop losses, uh, take profits and prices. I, I'm looking to trade. So I could be getting in trades and um, I'm just different, but everybody else has different styles. Okay. Um, Dave and Blair, they like to use these when Blair's trading Bitcoin, he loves these, he targets breakouts. He'll have his sell buy stops in and like take profits and he's killed it. He's the one that uh, exposed um, <laughs> funding talent. He took them for all that money. Like, um, and he was just doing buy stop order, sell stop with Bitcoin. So it does work. It's great. But you got to understand um, um, you're getting whatever spread they give you at that time. And then buy limits and sell limits. So it's just like basically the opposite here. So it's an order placed uh, above the price when, when it goes up. So if we're placing a buy limit, um, what it is, is if you go to your, um, so you're setting it at the price. Okay. So we're limiting the price. So if it comes down to this support level, I'm, I want to buy here. I'll have the price. It's a set at a limit. So it will not, if it goes um, until it touches your price, then it will trigger. If it comes like right here, one pip away, it won't get triggered. And then let's say it comes one pip away and then it goes right back up. So that's the thing when you're using these, if it doesn't touch, it won't trigger and you might miss out on a trade. So um, that's the only thing with these things. When you have like limit orders, if it misses you by a pipette, it won't get triggered where you could just hit a market execution buy with your finger and you're in the trade. So those are the pros and the cons of using these things. Okay. And then you have to manually put it in again. If you take a buy limit, you got to set the price. You can set your stop loss and you can manually put in your take profit if you like. And then you just click buy or sell and it will go put you in the trade. And guys, if you want to test it out on a live market, do it with a, with a nano lot, do it with a 0 0.001, like 10 cents, but just try it out. Okay. So you get comfortable with how these work. Then, then you can go back to doing it with your normal lot sizes. Anytime you're back testing or you're trying something new in the real market, I always do a 10 cent lot size. Okay. When you'll probably see on my, when I show like my profits, you'll see like I made $500 and then you'll see something for like $2. It could be, I'm just I'm testing out. It's a feeler trade. Cause what I do is I, I like to do feeler trades. Um, if I, so if I want, if I play the fake out guys, this is another tip guys. If I played the breakout impulse candle, instead of going in hard with my normal lot size, like a five lot, something heavy, I'll, I'll, I'll do like something like a 10 cents, 20 cents lot. And then if the thing, if that gets faked out, I then I don't care if I lose one dollar. Um, but that would have been that could have been disastrous if I was using a bigger lot size. So and then if that little mini thing for goes up twenty cents, forty cents, sixty cents, it starts going up. Then I could start hitting it with a with a bigger lot size. So that's another tip, guys. I don't tell people that on YouTube, but that's what I tell you guys. So you can always do a small feeler trade. That's what could be your impulse. Do something small that you don't really care about, but it's kind of like you're sending out a chicken out in the street. And if that chicken gets killed, it's done. But, but if that chicken survives, then maybe you can, you can, you can go up with it. But uh, that's another, that's just, it's a feeler trade. I call it. Okay. Just set that up and go with it. Um, and then you're really testing the market. And then if it starts going in your direction, then you can start trading with the trend. You know what I mean? Um, so that's another good tip guys. So order types, guys, um, that's just you guys are going to have to find preference what you guys like. So market execution is just one tap of the button, buy or sell, you're in the trade. Then you have to go in there manually and set up your stop loss, okay? Um, and um, 
or the other orders are if you see, you know, when we're setting up like a support resistance right here. Okay, so I'll show you right here. Um, if I want to set up like a buy stop here, okay, so for example, oh, guys, sorry, I didn't even see the chat box, my bad. Okay, I'll just read over this. Uh, Fusion is Fusion is for non-US residents. Yeah, it's got no, no US residents and no Ontario residents anymore in Canada. We got in a few years ago, so we're like grandfathered in with them from Ontario, but they do the rest of Canada, excluding Ontario, and they don't do US right now. But I talked with them and they are going to be getting US residents. Uh, they just have to pass all regulations and legislation, but they said it's coming soon. Um, what was the full name of the broker? Um, Malkin, I'm on IC Markets and I have big spreads. We use Fusion Markets out of Sydney, Australia. Fusion Markets, okay. Um, how many orders for one move? Um, one. How many, how many can you set with a type of order on your phone lab? You can set multiple orders, guys. I, um, you can set multiple orders. And, and that's that's what you're using that leverage from your broker. So as long as you have enough uh, leverage, you could do like five buy orders. If you That's what I'm saying. If you love a nice solid 10 pip move, like I live off of 10 pips, but I do multiple orders, okay? So you can now compound your pips. So all you're looking for is that 10 pip move. But if you put three orders in, now you're making 30 pips. So you don't necessarily at least have to look for additional trades you can you can eat off of one 10 pip move is what i'm trying to say guys okay so um there is that strategy adding multiple orders okay Okay, guys, so the chat's all good. I answered all those. Um, I just want to show you up here. Okay? So you know when we're trading, we, we box this in. There's our resistance up there. So if this thing starts to break out, like we see a bullish candle coming up and it's going to break out and it goes up here and does this move. Okay. So if I want to set this up before it happens, what I could do is right now go to my MT4. I could go to uh, MT4. This is GBPUSD. I could go to trade and then I could go to a buy stop. Okay, what I could do is before it even happens, I could put a buy order in at this price, 139.57. Okay, so it, but if it's an impulse candle breaking out, it doesn't matter. You're going to get triggered. Okay, so that's the one thing. If there is an impulse candle, or that's why I like to, I don't like to use this all the time because I like to wait for maybe a retest candle. Because um, if, if it is a breakout and a fake out, you're going to get triggered in that trade. Okay, and you got no control about it. Um, so if you do, I would be always be placing the buy stop above the resistance of this wick of this candle. So right now, it, technically, it's 139.581, okay? So if you want to go one pip above to be safe, 139.59, um, you could place your price in there. Then your next thing is you need to place your stop loss. So I normally would place stop loss below the consolidation box. So if I'm getting into a buy up there, okay, um, you, where do you place your stop loss? Number one, you have to have your stop loss because if, if it's trading around in here, I'm not taking a buy till it's up here. But when it gets triggered, I want to have my stop loss maybe placed below here, maybe 10 pips behind, but underneath this consolidation box because I don't want this because if you don't have a stop loss, guys, as soon as this breaks, look at what could happen. Your account is gone right there. You know what I mean? You want to limit your loss and just get out, okay? Escape before you get something that happens like this. Um, and then you can also set your take profit. Third thing is you can set your take profit. So if you like five pips, you can manually put it in. When the candle goes up there, it's going to execute your trade. You're going to look at your MT4. You're going to be up $50, okay? And you can manually put that in without you even hitting the, the sell button or closing a trade, okay? So that's what buy stops are and sell stops, same thing, okay? Those are, you're manually doing all that. If you don't like that style and you're just moving with the markets, then you use market execution, one click button, buy, sell, okay? <clears throat> okay, so that's uh, all of this. Um, so market orders, uh, market execution, an order instantly executed against a price that your broker has quoted. A pending order is an order to be executed at a later time at a price you specify. So you're picking the price, you're setting it, okay? Um, and a pending order can be a buy limit, buy stop, sell limit, or sell stop. And uh, a limit order is orders placed to either buy below the market or sell above the market, okay? Um, so this is all explaining this stuff here. 
Um, I'm going to go now into stop losses with you guys, okay? Because this is important stuff to stop losses. Amaya, uh, what's the, your technique for getting the retest? I'll show you right after this. We'll go back to trading view and I'll show you guys a few. Uh, uh, let's just get, um, finish this web and then we'll get into questions and I'll show you all about the retest because I know a lot of you guys have questions about the retest. So definitely we're going to spend some time on that. Let's just um, get through this stop loss here. So this is like where to place stop losses, guys. And I, I'll revisit that retest because that's a good question. Um, so we have stop losses, okay? So number one thing with stop losses, guys, there is some traders that don't use stop losses okay they use a naked stop loss they use a mental stop loss i i am one of those traders that you've used a mental stop loss when i'm trading sometimes um because i've been trading the markets for a long time and market makers have access to higher levels of technology than us retailers have we have up to level two where we can see like bid and ask and order flow. Okay, if we're trading stocks, um, I can I can advance my dashboard, pay twenty dollars a month, and I have access to level two analysis where you'll see a bid and an ask. It will show you how many orders are going through, but that's basically all we can see as retail traders. But market makers they have access to level three, four, and five analysis. Okay, retail traders have been fighting for this, um, like have lawsuits and been everything to get against them because what they can see is they can see where your hard stop loss is they can see that on their end so if a lot of people have their stop loss placed right down there they could easily push the market down trigger stop losses and carry the market right back up you know when i say it's a liquidity grab and like a stop loss raid where you'll see a big red candle come down uh wick out and then you see it go right back up what they did was they came down they manipulated the market down they triggered everyone's stop losses and they bought the they bought the bottom and then they brought it right back up that's what that wick reversal is and then it goes up with a rejection wick and then it turns into hammer candle and then it's gone so that's could be a stop loss raid um so but there's you as a new trader, you definitely have to use a hard stop, okay? But it, but you can win if you know where to place it, okay? Um, so this is what we're going to get into. This stuff is important about stop losses, guys. Okay, so for a buy, if you're taking a buy, okay, so price action is coming down to a level of support and we're taking this bullish engulfing candle. We're getting in a trade here and we're looking to go to the upside. We're looking to make 5, 10 pips, 20 pips going up. When we get into a trade, we have to set a stop loss unless you've been trading the markets for a while and you like me i always have a mental stop loss of 10 pips if my trade goes to 10 pips then i'm going to look at the, the price action and if i want i will simply close the trade i don't need a mental i don't need a hard stop loss i will get out i'm a big boy i will get out of the trade myself okay um but there is some traders that don't do that because i used to be that sometimes like that um where it went down 10 pips and i'm like uh, i'm gonna it's gonna reverse i'm gonna wait five more pips and then it goes down five pips and then i'm like oh shit i'm already down 150 i'm gonna i'm gonna risk another 50 dollars, and then it can get disastrous i learned my lesson by doing that okay so <laughs> believe me i've been through it all i've tried everything guys there is and um, I've learned my lessons, guys. That's why I don't want you guys to commit these mistakes. So I now trade with a hard stop loss. I trade with a hard stop, no matter what. Even if I think that the price is going to reverse, I don't even I don't even care anymore. I always I look for now risk to reward ratio. If my trade is giving me more than a one to one, I'll take that trade. If I'm willing to risk ten pips, I need to be making ten or more pips in that trade. And then I'll take it with hard stop. I don't even do mental stops anymore. I do always now hard stops. Um, but the only disadvantage of that is market makers have access to seeing where everybody's stops are. So if we get into a trade and a ton of people have a stop loss, few pips below, what they could do is they could just come with a bearish candle, start pushing momentum down, touch down, grab those, those stop losses, and then price goes up. It's happened to everybody. I guarantee you, you get into a trade it, you 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 like the bullish momentum you like the buy your technicals are all correct and but they get you with a, a fake out a wick out candle that it happens guys okay it's all it's all part of the game of trading okay you got to understand that when you start to understand that then you you know how to play the game with the market makers okay that's all it is it's retail traders trading against 
market makers and banks, okay? That's all it is. Um, it's who has the upper hand and they have the advantage right off the, the hop because they have, they can trade with algorithms, okay? With robots that can move prices that we can't even control. So it happens guys. I'm just, I, I, I'm telling you guys like the truth of how markets work. Um, but you can, you can still be very consistent and profitable if you understand these things. If you go into the markets without knowing this stuff, then, then they'll get, those are the people that are looking to target, the people don't, that don't know this information, okay? So when we're setting a stop, I'll, I'm gonna go into live trading with you guys and I'll show you how I set it up live. But in this trade, you guys know how we trade. This is a consolidation box. This is, uh, I don't trade this stuff inside here. What I look for is the breakout candle. Um, with volume close above here. And this is like the retest candle. And I'm going to show you guys what the retest candle is. And then I would get into a trade. This would be my buy entry. And then you can either place your stop loss below the wick of your previous five minute candle, or you can place it below the consolidation box, depending on how much you are, you're willing to risk on this trade. Okay. So there's that style you can do it. And also with a, a stop loss sell. So if we're getting into a sell, Price is going up, but we think now like how gold reversed at 10 a.m. You hit the sell button, but now we have to place a stop loss above here because we don't want price to continue to run up. If it does, we want it, we want to get out of this trade. We don't want a disaster to happen. We're willing to risk five or 10 pips and we're going to get out. Okay. So we have to place a stop loss above when we're taking a sell. We place a stop loss below when we're taking a buy. Okay. So in this example, price action is coming up. This red line is maybe an hourly or daily resistance. And these are five minute candles. They're starting to get rejected up there, rejected. Now we're coming in a downtrend, descending triangle. And this is our first candle breaking out, okay? So that could be the breakout candle impulse. And then right beside here, I don't know if you guys can see it, but it's a doji candle coming right back and it's touching that green line. That's a retest candle. So that's the one I would be taking a sell on. And then you can place your stop loss real tight above this, or you can go above here, or you could go right above this higher time frame resistance and you can be safe. And then when it starts going down, here's TP1, here's TP2, here's TP3, and then you see it goes plus. Then what you do is you take your stop loss and you can trail it down with your, with your gains. So I can take the stop loss and I can put it right to break even. Or what you can do is now you can take stop loss. If you're already at TP3, you can put a stop loss now at like TP1. So no matter what happens, you'll, you'll secure 10 pips, okay? You know automatically 10 pips are in your pockets, $100 US dollar if you're using standard is in your pocket, no matter what happens in this trade, worst case scenario, you made $100. If it continues to go down and break like this, let's say it goes down to TP4, you now can go in and manually take your stop loss, put it down here, secure 20 pips, put your stop right there. So if it does reverse, it taps out and it cashes you out, okay? So okay. there is those um, advantages with a stop loss, placing a trailing stop loss. Okay, guys. Um, so those are stop losses. Now let's go. Okay. I want to go to trading view. Um, I want to answer your questions now, guys. So number one, uh, which question was it? Um, retest candle. Okay. So I want to get you on the retest candle. Okay. So what are retest and breakout candles? Cause I know there's got some guys messaging Dave and I on this. Okay. So if we're looking to take a trade guys, okay. Um, right here. And guys, do you, if, you, if you guys are familiar with TradingView, do you guys know what the back test button is? Up here, we have bar replay. This is awesome when you're learning, guys. I, I, I used to live by this um, when I was learning all different strategies. What we can do is a bar replay. I can hit this button right here and I can take out these candles and I can play now candle by candle. We can set up strategies. So what if this was live right now, okay? You know how we set up charts? Um, this now, I can see it's coming into consolidation. So I don't trade this stuff. You know what I do is I box this in. Just gonna grab my tool here. Okay, so when, when I see price action doing this, I, I box it in like this, okay? And then you know that I'm looking for either a breakout up here or a breakdown below, okay? So that's what we're looking for. So I'm looking for a nice breakout. This could be an impulse. And what an impulse candle is, is coming to touch this wick right here, possibly this wick right there. So we're looking for a nice little breakout. 
might get a rejection. And then we're looking for a retest candle right here, okay? And then the retest, if we get a higher low, we start building off of this, then we're looking for price to come up to this level. This level could be a TP1. There might be a pullback because obviously that is a resistance area, but we don't want too much of a pullback. We want buyers to step in and take it up to there, okay? You guys see this all day with Dave and I do this on the charts. Okay, sorry. Uh, and then also when price is consolidated, we don't know that it's going to continue to go up or down. So what I'm doing is now I'm getting ready for maybe a sell situation. So we could have an impulse candle break out and then I'm looking for a retest. Okay. Maybe a bull candle to come right up here and sellers to take it down here, more, more selling pressure. Then they could push it down to this level, maybe this, and we're looking for something like that. So now what we can do is candle by candle. So what I can do now on my bar replay is I can go candle by candle. Okay, I just wanna to go to the chat, guys. Um, Albert, was scalp also um, too fast? By the time you put a stop loss, you lost, yeah, that, that, that's the thing. Albert, if you're using a larger lot size, you know that um, you don't have time to play games with um, and manually putting in stop losses because in one minute, that thing could shoot up 10 pips, on like a five lot, that could be 500 US dollars, okay? And by the time you're setting your stop loss, this, that, that wick could come right back down and go back to break even. Or if it starts dropping five pips, you're down $500. So gotta understand with what type of trading you're doing. If you're doing more of a relaxed trading, a lot size that you're comfortable with, then you got time to go manually put in your, your orders and things like that. But if you're scalping with high lot sizes, then unfortunately you don't have that much time to set all that stuff up. It's just, that's how it is. Because the 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 candles I move so fast. One K having blue screen, but up. Okay, and uh, Malkin, <clears throat> how do you close big jumps without a stop loss? The reaction to close the trade is sometimes much too long. How do you close big jumps without a stop loss? It, you can it can like if you were trading gold this morning, you can see if you don't have a stop loss, it can get out of control. Okay, so as a new <laughs> trader, if you're new to the markets, guys, always use a hard stop. Okay, that's rule number one. Rule number one, you have to, okay? Um, because you got to learn how trading is. You don't want to take a trade and you don't use stop loss and then you blow uh, most of your account. You're going to hate Forex trading. You're going to hate it. You're going to say, it's a scam. It's bullshit. It's this, it's that. It's not. It's You have to respect your stop loss, okay? You got to be humble and you got to be willing to take a loss, okay? It happens, guys. There's not one trader, there's not one on this planet that can consistently take trades and be be profitable. There's traders that are 70%, 80%, 90%, you know? But to be 100%, there's nobody on this planet. You got to take a loss, okay? With You have to, you have to. But you got to understand your risk, okay? So... Um, and then what you want to learn, guys, are your entries. You want pinpoint entries. Because if you have a pinpoint entry when it's starting to break out, you don't need to have such a wide stop loss. You can have a tighter stop loss. And then we're looking for it to go directly into profits. And then you move your stop loss right to break even and you got a free trade. Okay. So th that's what we're kind of looking for. Um, so hopefully that uh, answers your question. But let's go now, guys. So what I'm going to do is, uh, okay, so we get now a bullish candle, okay? And it's making a higher high, okay? So normally, I'm looking for a trend. I'm starting to see a trend forming like this. So I can see a trend forming. I'm looking now for the breakout up here. This can be an impulse candle. You know, guys, when I tell you, if you want to take an impulse candle, because we could get a green candle that goes all the way up there and continues going up. But that's why I use like RSI on my chart. I like to see where that strength is at. What if I put my RSI on my chart and it's already above 70 up here? Then we're not going to get too much of a, a breakout because we're already in overbought. But what if that RSI is like 30 and creeping up, it's got some room to run, or we're about to break over that 50, that psychological 50, then we're going to go into bullish ter territory, then we might get a nice bullish candle following through. So it's always important, guys, to know where, where the context of the impulse candle, how it's, where, where it is in trading with the strength, okay? Because if it's starting to get really high, like today, when gold got overextended at 85, 90, um, at like 10, 10 a.m., you don't want to be looking for breakout buys, okay? Because it's not, it's over, it's not going to go up too much further than that, okay? It was already overextended. Everything was overbought. The 15 minute, the 30 minute, the hourly candle, everything got, and then we just needed that news in the market to cool it off. And then you saw when it dumped, it dumped hard, okay? So now what I'm doing is I'm positioning myself for a impulse buy or 
a breakout with a retest. So let's see the next candle. So next candle, it's a hanging man, okay? So it opened red, it came all the way down here and it picked up some support and it went back up. So it closed right near our trend line. So it is still considered a little bit bullish because we have a wick on the bottom. So it's still, we have not taken a trade yet because nothing got triggered up here. And this is where you could also have like a buy stop order. You can have a buy placed up here, stop loss already placed and you're going with it. If not, you have like your, your trigger finger. You're gonna be a market execution. You're gonna do it yourself. Okay, then we get, again, we get rejected, no breakout. Now we're breaking below the trend. So again, it's just consolidating around here. And then it goes down now, see how it went bearish? And then it picked up a wick and it's coming up bullish again. So again, our next candle might start to break out here. There it is, okay? So did you see how the candle went green? all the way up here. So that was the breakout candle. And then it closed right here, but the volume closed above here. So now we need to wait for our next candle, a retest, okay? This is the next candle that's gonna tell us to maybe get into a buy, or this is gonna be a fake out candle. So let's see. Okay, look at what we get. So this candle opened red and it came down here and it closed red. So there's no buy, there's no retest yet, okay? Because it came right back down to the support level. So I need to see like a kind of a reversal. So I'm still not in a buy situation here, okay? Because it's this is retesting, but I don't have any good confirmation of a buy here. It's bearish. Next candle. Then it starts breaking down. The red volume comes now below that, that breakout area. So I'm still not in a trade. Now the volume is back down here. So the, I, the probability is it's gonna come back down into this box. And then we got a red candle. I'm still waiting. This is where patience. See, now you got a red candle, bigger bearish candle. So this was like a fake out candle. I guarantee you this candle caught a lot of buyers. Okay. Cause, and then look at the pips. It went from 139.10. Okay. 139.10 to the high wick was 13. So it's three pip move, three pip minus one or two pips for your broker. You're, you're left with nothing. Okay. So you got to understand. And then if you, you had your stop loss, you'd be going down now and pro you'd be at a loss right now, okay? Because you remember you bought in right here. So it's not always good to take impulse candles. You gotta wait for retests. Let me see if we can find a retest. See, but at what time are we trading at here? What are we trading? This is British pound, US dollar at two. I, I wanna show you guys like um, volatile sessions when we're trading. Okay, here's a good example of a retest, okay? <clears throat> okay, so see this, I, I all day, I, cons I do not trade this. I'm telling you guys for a fact, I do not trade this stuff. I box all this in, okay? Every time I see something like this, that's all I'm doing. So. Look here, guys, okay, this is a retest to answer all of your questions, guys, okay? This candle, bearish, all the way down. We engulfed this. So this is a bearish engulfing candle. It's the number one bearish candle, the most selling volume. And it closed the body, all that volume, all those sellers. We took out these buyers and we closed below the, the support line. So that's good. That's giving us an indication that this has a probability of going down. Now look at the continuation we open here, but this is a retest, okay? So the candle opened up and it was green. It came green all the way up into this area, but then it got rejected, okay? So it got rejected because of all of this selling pressure coming down. These sellers said, ah, uh, you buyers are not pushing this up. We got a lot of momentum. We probably have higher time frame momentum, like 15 minute, 30 minute candlestick are coming down bearish. And oh, now this is how it looks on five minutes. So then you pick up a wick and it starts getting rejected. So when you see this forming, Clue number one is you have a bearish engulfing candle, okay? Confirmation number one. Confirmation number two, you have the candle close below the support level, okay? And then, sorry, guys, if you, guys, if you can just... Uh, sorry, okay, uh, sorry. Um, if you got... Guys, oh, can, I mute just your guys, microphone. can I guys just get you guys mute the mics, please? Um, just so we can finish this. Sorry, guys. Um, 
And so this is confirmation number one, guys. Okay, so it, it's all steps. Okay, that's why when I'm I'm, I'm trading play by play candlesticks, I, I that's why I'm doing this because it's for me. It's like I'm trying to understand what's going on with the price action. I'm trying, I'm trying to, guys. Can I just please get you guys to please mute the mics? Uh, okay, so number one, guys. Um, I see lower highs, okay? So that's like giving me an indication that selling pressure is going down. You can also draw trend lines to a trend from here to there to see it visually. And then we have the bearish engulfing candlestick. That's clue number one. Clue number two is it closes below most recent five minute support level. Volume is below that. Now, all I need is this to, to give me the, the confirmation to take a sell, okay? I see buyers come up, they push it up. And it, as long as it's below... 50% of this candle, we're good to go, okay? So what I do is, that's about 50% of this red candle. This green candle could possibly come all the way back up, but we need it, these sellers to at least push it down 50%. We need some selling volume to continue this, okay? The, the, the more pressure we have that this candle stays red, then we can, the probability we're gonna get down, we're gonna grab 10, 20 pips, okay? Um, so when I see right away the wick get rejected early, early into the, the candle, like this just opens up, Buyers try hard to push it up and it gets rejected. So what I'm looking for is I'm taking a sell entry right there, okay, all day. I have a bearish engulfing candle, close below support. I got a rejection wick at wow. confirmation right there at resistance. I'm taking a sell. So I'm going to my empty door, I'm placing sell order. And then what I'm doing is I'm I'm in the sell, okay? So, um, um, what I'm doing is right here, guys, is I'm grabbing now my tape and I'm placing my profits and my stop loss. Okay. Where do I place my stop loss? I'm going to place it 100% above this consolidation box because if price comes back up, you know, it might just cool off again and then it gets hammered down. But I don't want to get taken out of this trade because I believe it's going to go bearish. Okay. Um, but then also, I didn't chart this one, but if, if I had maybe like an hourly resistance up there or a daily resistance, like a white or yellow line, maybe I could place my stop loss um, close to that. Ronnie, I have, I have a question for you, Ronnie. I'm sorry yeah. to interrupt you. Yeah, no worries, bro. Um, so hey, tell me if I'm wrong with this. Sometimes when I enter, I always keep an eye on the clock, like if it's the close of the hourly candle yeah, or yeah, yeah. maybe uh, a certain time, the four hour candle, like, you know, at 5 a.m., for example. Yeah. Um, do, you, do you do that as well? Because I know you, all, I see all you time. enter. Yeah, I see I'm, you enter at the five minute. Um, but then I, 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 I you know, I, I keep the 15 to 30 minute open as well. And yeah. then the one minute. But um, yeah, Albert, you've been with us for a couple of days, but when, when I start trading, I do my top down analysis. I start off with my daily candles and then I look at the trend, the movement of the daily candles. I put yellow lines for my uh, resistance and support of dailies. And then I do my hourly candles. I look at the hourly movement, the trends, and then I do my white lines for my hourly. Then I know if it's bearish or bullish or if it's consolidating on a higher time frame then that helps me with scalping the trend. So that's how I do it. But I'm always looking at top down always. Every time I, you see when I start a call, I'll, I haven't been doing it now because I've been doing the charting before because I want to get in at 9 p.m. But like I'll do it, to, I'll show you, I'll do it on this call like real quick. I'll do a top down of a pair and I'll show you like how I do it. So guys, when, now guys, can I just please, please get you guys to just mute the mics. I don't know who it is. But, um, Okay, guys, um, now we get this bearish candle right here, guys. Okay, so it's got the rejection wick. So I feel confident taking this sell, guys. It's, it meets all my criteria. So what happens now is I'm following the volume now, okay? So it's easy to follow this, guys. What we got to do is we got to draw now support levels. Just mute them, bro. Just mute all of us, Ronnie. Just, where's the mute, mute everybody here on this? Uh, on Zoom, you can yeah, you can mute, mute on all. Zoom. I think on the main thing, you can it tells you mute. Yeah, go, all, to yeah. go to participants. Go to participants. Participants? Yeah. Yeah. Then, go to mute, mute all. Okay. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Okay. We all good? Okay. Perfect. 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 Okay. Thank you. I didn't know where that was. Okay. So look, guys. 
this is important guys, okay? Because this is what you're gonna be looking for for, for for seller buy entries, okay? So number one guys, okay, consolidation box. I'm not trading this shit, okay? I'm waiting for either the move to the upside or to the downside. I get this clue number one. We get finally a bearish engulfing candle, take out these buyers close below the support. That's clue number one. Now, clue number two is I get the retest, okay? So it initially opened green here and went up, got rejected real quick. So selling pressure is heavy. So I'm getting into a sell. I place my stop loss up there and I'm, and I'm going with this trade. Okay. And um, so now I look left right here. So see here, this was like an area of support that can be a take profit one. Okay. And look at the drop right there. So that could be a take profit one. Okay. So we're dropping from here to here. That's almost nine pips, nine and a half pips. Okay. That's a, that's a solid trade, but look at the candle, how heavy it was. It went all the way through TP one. Look at right here, guys. Okay. So my yellow line, uh, this was charted from before yellow line is my daily support. Okay. So this candle came all the way. It pierced through the daily support and then buyers brought it right back up. Cause obviously this was a big candle. It dropped like 20 pips and now we got buying pressure coming at the daily support level, but it closes. And then now this is like another retest candle. So this is like a retest. So we open up, how high is the wick? Where is it going? Remember now, guys, I like to use 50% below on my, on my volume. So look at this candle, the continuation. As it opened, selling pressure, top wick, they pushed it down and they closed it below daily support. Or look at that. So... This tape is just running, guys. So we're I'm holding this trade. Like, I, I don't even want to be scaling out right now. Next level, where I'm looking to take profits, I'm eyeballing this area, okay? So this was a previous level, okay? And then back down, white line is my hourly, hourly support. So this thing is like bleeding, guys. Um, then you get a pause candle. A pause candle, guys, is a neutral candle. We did this the other day. This is a spin top candle neutral 50 50 this is not enough for you to like get out of a trade it went up selling pressure pushed it back down we had some buyers it closed with small red volume but follow your candlesticks every one of these candlesticks is making a new lower low and we got lower highs this is a pause candle this is called like a three bar play where you get a bearish candle a pause and then you continue your momentum this is called a three bar bearish play i'll i'll, I'll teach you guys all about that okay um and then this thing just continues to break down. We break below supports, closes here. Look at this candle. This is why I'm always zooming in when candles are opening up. See the continuation? It opens and it goes straight down. There's not even a wick coming up. There was absolutely no buying pressure. This is all this is selling pressure. This is when you should be like looking to scale out now, okay? Because look how big this drop was. Um, and you're getting down here, then your next candles are all these spin top candles, okay? So this is where it could start coming back up, a pullback. It could start going down again, but then it reaches consolidation. But that move right there, man, you could be done trading for the entire day. That move from here all the way, let's say right here, that that's a 40 pip move, 40 pips, guys. 40 pips is good pips. And this was a nice clean play. And you see how it broke down just by itself, okay? So that's what the retest candles are, guys. You're looking for a breakout impulse and a candle to come back to retest where the buyers, where you're going to get confirmation sellers or buyers coming in. Because there is traders that are strictly retest traders. They don't trade impulse. They're like, I call them like rocks. They just sit there all day. And if there's an impulse candle, they don't care. They'll, they'll, they, they want to get the continuation candle. And then if it comes real uh, back to retest and there's a quick rejection wick with volume below support, those guys are hitting sell orders all day. Okay. Um, so hopefully like, here's another one. Okay. So as this one is breaking up, okay. So th these are what retests are, guys, okay? So this play, we have it coming up bullish, okay? So we're looking to break the yellow line, which is daily resistance. This five-minute candle breaks, has an impulse break up to here. It goes back down, but the body closes above here, okay? So that's, again, clue number one, that the, that the volume closed above daily resistance. That's good. So now our next candle, this is the retest candle. What does this candle do? How does it open? It opens right here and 
it goes down, okay? Because remember, this is a hammer candle. It opens right here, but it's got a wick coming down. So I'm always, I'm always, I, I, I go candle by candle. So this was my last five minute support right there. So this wick came down and it's retesting this candle's support. So remember there was buyers in this, in this body and they're up here, they're above here. So they're in this trade. I want to continue with these guys because these guys are in the trade. I want to go up with these guys. Okay. So this candle is giving me confirmation that sellers tried to push it down. These guys could be hitting buy again. This is like me. Um, I get in on the impulse candle, but then the second candle is me guys. So I'm getting in on the retest. I'm waiting. This is where I'm adding multiple orders. So I'm adding a second order here. It comes down. It meets my criteria. These guys are still holding it. So I feel comfortable getting in with these guys again. It comes up. Now we close like as a, it's, it looks like a hammer candle, but remember hammer candle should have two to three times the, the wick. So this is like a small hammer, but what I'm basically looking at, it came down, held support, volume went up and it closed at the top of the candle with bullish volume. All we need to do now on my next candle is break above there. So when I'm doing that, I'm getting in my, my buy order, wherever I bought in right there, I'm looking, I'm already placing my stop loss right there below these candles. Okay. And I'm riding it up. My next candle Look how they open it. And what does it do again? It comes back down for another retest. Now we test the daily support right here, 1.39311, and it gets rejected again. I could add a third buy order if I wanted, and I'm riding the momentum. Then when it goes up to here, I start to see rejection. I, I, I look left, because I know where I'm taking profits before it even happens, okay? So number one, looking left, I have to be looking to take profits there. And then if, look, I have nothing, look. So, and then I got to look over here for my next profit target. Like right around here, okay? And then I'm, and then my next one will be hourly resistance. That's Albert. Those are my, what my lines are, okay? So I'm not flip-flopping from daily and hourly candles. I have everything strategically in color on, because I hate flip-flopping. I don't want to miss price action, especially when I'm scalping like one minute candles. I don't want to miss any of that, okay? So where were we at here? Oh, that wasn't it. Sorry, guys. I just got to see how far back we went. Where was that play we just had? Oh man, did I lose that play? Uh, I can't find it. Um, but you guys get what I'm saying. Like those were the retests. Here's another one. Here's another one. Like we can find these all day, okay? So here's your breakout candle, guys. This is the impulse break, okay? So number one, the volume is bullish. We get a nice bullish engulfing candle close above hourly resistance. And so that's giving me clue number one. We could be going bullish. Here's the retest, guys. Look at it. It's beautiful. It opens up and it comes down. And the wick, it wicks out exactly at my hourly support line. I hit a buy and place my stop loss down here. Guys, um, so there's a buy, stop loss placed right below there, okay? And then we're looking to take this up. There's your retest, goes into a bullish candle. Look at the continuation. Next candle opens, very little drawdown, goes up. Next candle opens, it's higher low, so, um, and it goes up. Now we reach yellow line, which is daily resistance. So you got to expect a little bit of sell-off. So you start to see it here. Next candle opens up, and it starts getting rejected. So this is where I would be scaling out or taking profits, because look what happens. It can come right back down. And this play could have been overextended. I don't have ours on my chart, but it could have been overextended up here, OK? So um, you'll see when we're trading live, guys, like how the retests work. but 
guys, just be patient. Um, if you get into trades, don't, don't always look to take those impulse trades. Believe me, some people are getting caught with those. Okay. And I, you don't need to just be patient. Like, look at this, this, this chart guys, if you see this, are you guys trading these candles? No, you're not. What you do is just box these in. Okay. And just wait, there's going to be a move. Price action only moves in three directions. It's either going to move sideways here or it's going to start to break out with a retest and we go up or it's going to break down okay so this is one where maybe you don't get one a retest everyone thinks guys you got to understand the markets don't always work like a textbook it's not always going to be like that so you got to understand how markets move you got to you got to under you got to um like you got you, when you guys trade you'll see different plays okay so this one if I have my trend line set up, like I see it's starting to go bearish right here. I got a trend line, okay? Now, this candle, this is an impulse break, okay? So there's a lot of traders that don't trade impulse. So if it comes down here, you could make pips. Like guys that take this, 138.99, it comes down to 96. It's a four pip move. But if you don't take it, we're now we're waiting for the retest. So some traders think you have to wait for a candle to come all the way back to this area. So a lot of traders think that a candle has to retest up here. It doesn't always happen, guys. You got to understand it, the markets are not just like how your textbook tell you guys. It's you got to feel the markets. You got to you got to be with the price action. So if we get a bearish candle and yeah, this could be the retest candle, but it is a bullish candle. It comes up, but what does it do? It creates a lower high before it even gets up to test this area. So we, we have selling pressure down here, pushing it down, okay? So that's enough maybe to take a sell entry. And if you do, you just have to have your trade position properly. So if you take like a sell up here, have your stop loss maybe placed above the consolidation box and you're looking for movement down. Follow the candles now. So we have this support line. Next candle, bearish engulfing, takes out the green candle and we close below that five minute support. And what's next? Right here. Here's our five minute support. And then below that, we got a white line. That's hourly support, okay? So when we break down, next candle, now look for continuation, guys, okay? So it opens right here. Look at, buyers don't even have any wick up here. There was absolutely no buying pressure. Sellers right off the hop continued going down bearish, brought it all the way down to there. Some people, they, they love to cash out, like that's good enough pips for them. But if you wanna try and maximize the profits and learn how to like trade and hold trades. I, this is takes discipline guys, believe me. Like there's some trades I take and I get out too early and then I'm like, damn, I could have held that for so much more, but that you will learn. Like I'm still learning um, <clears throat> how markets work still. Um, so this one, it came down, it picked up a wick. There was buying pressure, but now if I'm still in the trade, I'm, I'm watching this candle. It opens. Now we get buying pressure coming back up. But what does it do? It creates another wick, which is lower than this candle and this candle. So now we have lower low, lower lower highs and lower lows. Okay, but then it goes down to here, and the next candle is bullish. This I guarantee you, this could have scared a lot of people, and then they take their profits and they get out. But if you're following, if you're still holding, like you're, or you take partials and you got a small runner then you wouldn't be phased by this green pullback candle because the next candle is bearish and engulfs it, breaks that support, and then we drop a little bit further, okay? And then you see it get down to here, but you got to be looking to scale out because remember you're scalping, guys. You can't hold these trades forever unless you're trading like a New York market and there's news and then you see like gold continue and drop or US 30. Maybe you can hold it a little longer, but when you're scalping like this, you got to understand, you got to be happy, guys, um, with taking like right off this trade, if you get in there and then it goes down 10 pips, like that's 10 pips is a nice play. And then look for another 10 pips, okay? Um, but that's 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 what that is. So hopefully guys that um, 
that helps with your retest questions because I know there's a few of you guys on this. Guys, um, let me know if you guys got any more questions. It's almost 826. We did the, the what we had to do. We did the market orders. We did the stop loss placements. We introduced what PIPs leverage lots are. So do you guys have any questions on that or any questions on anything else, guys? You can unmute yourselves, guys, and you can start asking questions or ask in the chat box, whatever you guys feel comfortable. Hey, Ronnie, you with uh, Divergence. Yep. Um, can you just go, go over like when to draw the divergence yeah. from RSI okay. on the bottom or on the top? Okay, so I'm going to start with a clean chart of a, of a pair that I don't even like trade as much, okay? To show you that um, we're going to look for divergence, okay? And divergence is key, guys. If you can spot it before it happens. Um, so I got to add RSI on my charts. Just one second. I, I tested it out on goal on the one minute the other day and literally like four times out of five, I won every trade with divergence. So yeah, so divergence works, but I, on one minute, it's kind of suspect on one minute because one minutes are fast. So you're going to get a lot of fake outs. Um, yeah. Divergence works better the higher the time frame. So yeah. it works well with five minutes, but it works even better with 15 minutes. It works even better with 30 minutes. It works even better with one hour. If you yeah. catch it on four hours and you're willing to hold, when you get a four hour breakdown and you spot divergence, that's where you can collect a lot of pips, but you got to understand guys this is another good thing i just want to get into so if you're trading on a higher time frame if you're trading like on four hour or daily candles you have to adjust your lot size if you're trading a four hour candle you have to have a bigger stop loss because you're gonna obviously make more pips again if you're willing to risk um 40 pips on a four hour candle to make 40 pips you have that's a one-to-one -one, but you got to be willing to risk 40 pips so you can't do a standard lot unless you have a big account because then you're willing to risk 400 dollars if you got if you only have like a thousand dollars in your account you can't risk half your account on a trade you got to understand you cannot do that it doesn't make sense so if you're looking on four hour candles you got to start adjusting your lot size you got to start going smaller on your lot size if you're going a higher time frame okay um and then if you're doing a smaller time frame like if you're scalping on maybe five minute candles maybe if you start um getting really good at getting these plays and you love 5 10 15 pips then maybe adjust your lot size maybe go a tad bit more and then you'll make more money with less pips well like i live off of making 10 pips but i use a five lot okay so on 10 pip move that's 500 dollars. like today i hit um, I was trading that gold in that consolidation. I was catching those wicks and I was good. I was getting in and out. It was perfect for me for five pips on, on, a, on a five lot. Four trades, you make 2000 US dollars. But I've been doing this for years, guys. I, I wouldn't suggest you guys learning to do that. Um, but uh, we're going to get you guys there. Like we're going to teach you guys everything what we, but I learned, I learned I learned with pennies, guys. I learned with 10 cents. I learned. And then as my account started growing, I started increasing my lot sizes. So you guys are going to be there too, but you guys don't have to get there and hit jackpot right away. Learn how to do this, guys. And that's the best way. Trust the process and just take your time, guys. The Forex market is 24 hours a day. It's not going anywhere. Um, we can learn this together. Like we're, Dave and I are not going anywhere with you guys. We're here for you guys, okay? We're not going anywhere. You can see what we're doing. Like we're stepping up the webinars, the live streaming, everything. We're, we're, we're putting in work, but the time is for you guys. Like um, I enjoy this time with you guys. Like I, I like live trading, but those are just YouTube guys. You guys are our members. So I really enjoy. Soon we're going to do live trading with you guys um, once we grow the YouTube account. So um so let me just see relative strength. Okay, so here it is. Here's my RSI. So what we're looking for is uh, like right here. Right now, I don't see. See how the price is going up? The, the strength is going up with it. Okay, so this is not divergent. See how the price is going up? Look at the strength. The strength from here, it's still going up. Okay, it's not going as fast. Okay, so this is called hidden divergence. The price is going extremely high. But the strength is still going up, but it's not going like you don't see the strength going straight up. So this is giving us hidden divergence. Okay, um, that could be giving an, us an indication that there could be some selling pressure coming soon. But that's not like when you see that that's an automatic bearish divergence. Okay, so what you could see here is. Uh, okay, now I can spot maybe some bullish divergence on the bottom. Okay, so with bullish divergence. If you see price dropping, see from this to here, the lows, okay, see how the price is dropping. And then in the same area, 
if you kind of connect your um, your RSI, you kind of make like a trend line from the, this area, you can see that, oh shit. Okay, so see how the price is dropping, but in the same time, the strength is starting to pick up, okay? So this could be giving us a clue. And then what I would do is, um, again, so if this is happening in here, see this consolidation? I don't trade that stuff. I, what I do is I box this in, okay? And I'm gonna carry this for me the rest of the night because this is gonna be the order zone. This is gonna be accumulation distribution all day. So um, here's a trade. So see how price action is coming down? Okay, it's coming down, it's consolidating, but the strength down here is slowly, it's moving up. You can see it's, it's ascending. The price is coming down, descending, but the strength is ascending. It's going up slowly. So I'm looking for, here's an impulse breakout, okay? So first candle was impulse break, came back and closed. Next candle is the bullish candle. Some traders like to trade off of a wick. So when this candle's coming and it's filling this wick, they're taking a buy order when it fills the top of this wick. But there is that strategy too. But other ones that I told you is waiting for candles to close. So even if this candle comes up here and you're still not in a trade, you're waiting for it to close. And then what you got to watch what's going on, okay? Um, so it came up to here. Then there was this push down. But where did it push down to? We've got higher low support. Then maybe you can buy into this bullish engulfing candle and take it up for a little bit. But also, we got to look at the time, guys. I Look at the time. This is 4 o'clock. This is the end of the day. Nobody trades this time. So I'm just showing you looking for divergence. But I don't trade this time because there's no big moves. Um, Ronnie, would you be able to maybe, I don't know if you're, you're able to look at US 30 and like a live example right now, for, yeah. for example, like it's yeah. pushing right now. Yeah. It already hit that 85, um, 885 that you gave us to, uh, and it went up to 896. Okay, so this is US 30, guys. This is live right now, okay? What time is it? 833, okay? Okay, so I'll set up the chart like uh, if I was trading right now, okay? So I'm just going to go off these five minutes real quick, okay? So look at our uh, resistance up here, okay? So we got resistance right here, okay? We hit, and then it got rejected, and then now I'm following the price action. There's your M pattern, leg up, neckline up, and then break. It broke. So when it broke the neckline, it dropped further down to here. So I'm picking up. This is how I set up my charts real quick, okay? So I'm looking now for all these levels, guys, okay? Uh, kind of, and then these are like take profit areas, okay? And they're usually um, about five pips until the markets really start to open up, and then they're about 10 pip ranges. Um, so now let's see what's going on. Do I see any divergence, okay? So price was coming down, and now we're moving up. So this is here it is divergence, guys, okay? So if I was trading this, you start to see price coming down here, okay? Price is coming down, but like same area, you're looking. Um, where can I, I'm, I'm now connecting here. I'm looking off of here. So I would drive it. I would like, I like to see, like right now we're trading live. So it bounced. We're starting to get strength. Again, I have my um, uh, 50 line right there. There's the, there's the 50. Okay. Let me just put the 50 on my RSI. Are you in trades right now, bro? Sorry, that's me. Oh, okay. Okay, so... What do we got going on here? Okay, so again, it's slow right now, okay? So market just opened up now. Now we're getting the volatility in the markets right now. Okay, so it broke out right here. So if I'm leading into 8 p.m., guys, there's always a move at 8 p.m. This is when futures open up, the futures market, okay? So leading in, what I would do, if, if we were trading this, I would have this position like this, boxed, okay? So... I start to see the strength now is increasing. See how it's like a trend line, it's increasing, it's coming up. So it's starting to get stronger. Now leading into this breakout, I have a trend. Like I, I like to connect, I see what's going on from the bottom, okay? So I see that these candles are moving up. So it's like a triangle right here, it's reaching the apex. So we're gonna get a move. We have this candle that comes up 755 
right here, came up and got rejected. This is the 8 p.m. candle right now open. So it came down, we picked up liquidity and we got a nice big bullish candle. This is what I'm saying. Some buyers, they step in right here. They wanna be part of this big engulfing candle. They don't wanna wait for a retest, okay? So if we start to engulf the previous wick, then look left and that's where we can go to. When you look left, number one areas, we gotta get over this, okay? And you see that we just blew right past that. Next area is right here, I already have it on my chart, okay? I, and you take it up, how high did it get up to? So that wick, you, I, always, I always follow the wicks and the volume. So we got up to there, then where did that candle close? It came down and closed right here. Next candle picked up, higher low, closed above the wick of this previous candle, okay? So we're now, our volume is above this wick, higher high. Here's your little indecision spin top candle, nothing pause. Now you get your bullish engulfing candle, continue to move up. We get up to this zone. Now guys, I'm starting to see that we're, we're, we're getting some rejections up top here. Okay. So this could be like positioning for a, a sell, like a pullback. So what I'm looking for now is this candle now to break support right here. And I could be starting now RSI is coming. It's again, it's by 70. So it could continue to come up and trap some traders here. But um, what you could do is you see some consolidation like this. You can trap this in now. And I, I could be looking for the, again. Now this is positioned live now. So what I'm looking for is a bearish candle to come down and close below here impulse and then i'm looking for a retest if we get it and then i'm looking for sellers to push it down to here here and back down to there okay and then this is how my chart would be set up when i'm when i'm getting ready to take the sell i would have my take profits so this would be basically take profit one if you want take profit two but take profit two would be right there but i'm not taking this trade until i see volume get under here then when i take the trade Maybe I want to place my stop loss above that wick. When I get into the trade, guys, I'm not taking a live trade right now, okay? Because I don't, the, the body is still inside this box, okay? And now what we are doing is now we're looking for our uh, divergence, okay? So we're starting to get maybe a little bit on the top, okay? So if you connect this wick to that red wick, you see price action was moving up. And then if we do on similar on RSI, like right here, we don't have much yet, but you can see it's coming down, okay? So all we need is another rejection right here at 70, and we're gonna get a, a wick coming off the top. We're gonna get a red candle. This might start forming into like a shooting star and start coming down. See how it's formed that upper wick now? Okay, so it's turning like in a pin bar candle. We just need now volume sellers to start pushing this down, and maybe this thing will start falling, okay? Um, but this is a no trade area for me. And then similar to guys, if, if it's gonna be continuing breaking out, like let's say there was news, let's say this was US session in the morning and then they brought us news. I would be looking maybe for a buy continuing up here if we come up and maybe we could possibly fill this wick and continue moving up, okay? So that's, that's like a trade, how I set up the charts, guys. And I'm just waiting now patiently, okay? Uh, okay, thank you, Ron, yeah. Uh, no problem, guys. No problem. Thanks for joining everybody. But um, yeah, so it's 840. So we'll wrap it up because we're going to go live in about 15 minutes, 10, 20 minutes. Um, but that's how I have it set up. And then guys, do you see any patterns? Okay. So number one, this could be forming like a head pattern. Okay. This is, could be like the left shoulder. This is a big head. We could see this come all the way back down here, form like a head, and then maybe it will flip, form a right shoulder, and then maybe it's going to start going down further tonight. Okay. You we're already overextended on five minutes here. So you just got to allow the price to do its thing. And maybe it's going to, maybe when we start the call at 9, 9.15, the chart is set up. We could possibly maybe get into it like a US 30 sell, or it might even be in a little bit of profits. Yeah, no worries, guys. Victor Albert, no worries, guys. Um, it's a pleasure doing these webinars with you guys. I, I, Dave and I really enjoy these. Dave, Dave is going to be hopping on, but he's busy too. He's got some things to do. Um, so that's why we, we work well together. If it's not Dave, then you got me. If it's not me, you got Dave. So there's two of us guys. Um, and uh, you guys can learn a lot. Ask questions, guys. Um, don't be embarrassed or shy. If you guys got questions, unmute the mics, ask whatever you guys want. This is your time, guys. Um, I guarantee you, like, if somebody has a question, somebody else has the same question. So, um, yeah, look at it. Now it could be coming down bearish, guys. Um, 
So again, as it's coming down, maybe you can start connecting trend lines like from the top of this wick. As long as we start, this is real steep. Like um, I wouldn't even draw a trend line yet because it's still consolidating. Um, but we need a break below here. US 30, 34,875. That would be a break. We need the candle to come down with volume, close, and then look for a retest. If that happens, you take it, place stop loss up here or at your wake up there, and then let's hammer it down. But what you can also do for confirmation, this is five minute candles. Guys, look at your 15 minute candle. Okay, what happened with this 15 minute candle? Um, it just broke 50. So your 15 minute candle still has momentum to go up. Okay. So five minute candle can maybe retrace maybe a little bit. It might come down for a little bit, but then it might reverse because our 15 minute candle is still in bullish territory up here. Okay. It's about 60. It's pulling back a little bit, but it's under indecision right now. Our 15 minute candle is like a, is has a wick up here and a wick down here, the volumes in the middle. So even our 15 minute candle that's going to close in four minutes, it's going to tell us a lot too. We need the body, this volume to close below here on the 15 minute candle. If we're going to go bearish 30 minute candle guys, Again, it's it's indecision candle. It's we had a big 30 minute bullish candle and now we have indecision. And look at the 30 minute, it's ready. It could be crossing 50 at 9 p.m., 9.30. Maybe US 30 will continue to run a little bit more, okay? We might get a nice five minute pullback, but then it might reverse into back into a buy guys, okay? So just keep that in mind guys. 